Here at Road CC, we like to make content that caters to everyone, whether you're a seasoned racer or thinking about setting foot on the bike for the first time. And well, this video is for everyone because no matter your ability, the importance of proper cycling kit that fits right cannot be understated. The right kit will be more comfortable, faster, and maybe even make you enjoy cycling just that little bit more. Stick around to see how much faster your cycling kit can make you. As a cycling journalist, I'm often asked when out on rides what the best upgrades are and how to get quicker. Now, the obvious answer is train more, but that often means I end up down some unwanted rabbit hole of a complete stranger telling me about their privates and how awful their saddle sores are. Saddle sores, rubbing jerseys, that weird tight feeling that jackets give you under the arms, seam lines when you take your bibs off, what if I told you they're not normal and all avoidable? Getting the right kit doesn't just mean taking a quick look at the size guide, because most brands will have different ranges for different disciplines and types of rider, depending on your body type and personal preference. Let me explain. To help me out, I've got my hands on what is basically the entire 2023 Castelli summer collection, and the choice is vast, for good reason. Castelli has a large range of products, from more relaxed fitting clothing to aero training kit and class-leading aero products. And even the products towards the lower end of the range benefit from trickle-down technology and decades of industry experience to provide mile-after-mile mile comfort at a sensible price. So, how do you go about choosing what's right for you? Up first, I'm wearing the Unlimited Entrata jersey and the Entrata bib shorts, which are designed for both on and off-road riding, offering all of Castelli's tech, just without the aggressive fit. The more relaxed fit suits those who wish to forego some aero in favour of a less revealing fit. It can also be used for any type of riding, often feeling more comfortable than a race fit jersey. Loose fit jerseys are longer in the torso than a race fit jersey, so it'd be suited to those who prefer to sit more upright on the bike than those who get tucked up nice and small on the drops. It's also likely to be more comfortable when sitting at the cafe or out for a drink after work on your commute home, without worrying about whether your belly button's gonna be on show. This would be a great option for non-professional cyclists and less experienced cyclists. And yes, I completely agree that you could find cheaper, but if there's one area that you're gonna invest your hard-earned dosh in, then surely it should be your kit. After all, there's no other part of your cycling gear that sits directly against your skin for hours. If I had a pound for every time someone said my X, Y or Z hurts on a bike, then I think I could walk out of that shop with quite a few Castelli jerseys. Much of our audience, as we know from our various surveys and stuff over the years, are seasoned cyclists, so this bit's for you. Whatever you're buying, there seems to be a sweet spot where above it, you can spend a hell of a lot more and only get marginally more benefit. With the Castelli range, I personally think that this is the spot. Pro Logo 7 jersey and endurance bib shorts. The jersey has aero raw cut arms, but a slightly larger body than a full race fit jersey. So it will fit more body shapes whilst providing more of an all day comfort for those long endurance rides. A mid fit cycling jersey like this one strikes a balance between a relaxed fit and a race orientated snug fit, providing a comfortable and non-restrictive feel without excessive fabric. Providing more freedom of movement makes it suitable for various types of cycling, such as long endurance rides, touring, or commuting. While not as form-fitting as a race fit jersey, it still follows the contours of the body, hence improving aerodynamic efficiency compared to a loose-fitting jersey. This might have more of an effect than you think on those faster group rides. Bib shorts are an essential part of any cyclist's wardrobe, and when they fit correctly, will reduce discomfort and chafing, improving your riding experience. Different chamois are engineered with different densities, shapes and thicknesses to cater for the style of riding you're doing. But personal preference does play a significant role when selecting the right chamois for you. Road cycling chamois typically have a medium thickness, providing cushioning for the sit bones. You might wonder how some people ride on such thin saddles. Well, this is partly down to personal preference, but also choosing the right bib shorts. The Progetto X2 Air seat pad used in these endurance bib shorts has a two layer design so that it's the chamois rubbing against each other rather than your skin against the chamois. It also features multi-density foam and comfort inserts to keep your undercarriage nice and, well, comfortable. And then it's got ventilation to help airflow so you don't get all sweaty and clammy. Of course, there are plenty of riders out there, myself included, who are looking for 
every marginal gain and the very, very best kit in the land. In most instances, that means looking at what the pros are using. Quite often, pro level kit is either out of bounds for us mere mortals, or you'll have to sell a kidney. However, when it comes to clothing, you might be surprised to find that you can get the very same kit the likes of Remco and Alaphilippe are wearing for less than you think. Caselli's Aero Race 6 jersey is the same jersey that was used by Team Ineos and now Sudal Quickstep. And as the name suggests, it is engineered for racing. If you're a competitive cyclist, then a race fit jersey is a no brainer, as most of the wind drag when you're cycling is caused by your body. They will show off your body for the good or the bad, but they are designed so that they won't restrict your movement. I must admit, I'm guilty of doing most of my training in an aero jersey, as, well, going fast never gets old, and I do find them rather comfortable. The sleeves of a race fit jersey are often longer and have a specific cut which enables them to fit comfortably in an aggressive position rather than, well, when stood up. They are also tapered, meaning that they narrow towards the opening and gradually widen towards the shoulder, which allows for a, well, a close fit around your biceps and triceps. The style of sleeves in particular aren't going to be for everyone, but they are the ultimate choice for the pros and keen riders wanting to go fast. The Aero Race 6 jersey features a drop tail, meaning that it's longer at the back than it is the front to prevent the jersey from riding up and there being a load of excess material when I'm hunched over the bars. Like the Aero Race jersey, the free Aero RC bib shorts that I have on are also designed for racing and have a raw cut edge at the waist and the end of the legs so they stay put without any silicon grippers. So we've gone through some different styles of cycling kit to try and help you find the style of kit that's right for you. This needs to take into consideration your riding style, your body type and personal preferences. But what we do know is that when your kit fits you right, there are some aero gains to be had. Let's have a chat with someone in the know who might be able to tell us how many watts are up for grabs. We spoke to Javier Disney from AeroCoach, who's an expert in aerodynamics, to find out just how much quicker your kit can make you. People think sometimes that aerodynamics is only applicable if you're going at very, very high speeds or a professional cyclist looking for the last fractions of a second to, to win a Tour de France stage or something on the track. But for um, anyone riding a bike, if you're traveling uh, in still air at over you know, mid twenties kilometers an hour, so 25 kilometers an hour or so, um, uh, you're going to be affected by aerodynamic drag quite considerably. Not only that, if you're traveling slower than that speed, but you're going into a headwind, then the relative airspeed over the body is very similar to what would, what it would be like if you were traveling faster and still air. So even though you might not think that you're quick enough to be like, you know, concerned about aerodynamics, it really does make a difference. And especially if you're going for longer rides, you, you can see that the more aerodynamic gains that you can make will be exacerbated um, and, and highlighted by saving much more time over, over a longer ride. So yeah, absolutely. Taking, taking care of your, your aerodynamics is, important, is relevant for everybody. So how important is it to have cycling kit that fits? If you think of a silhouette of a rider from the front, the vast majority of that is gonna be, is gonna be the rider rather than the, rather than the bike. And because of that reason, and because the surface area is so high, the, what you cover the rider in is going to be really important. If we were sold bicycle frames that were all covered in fabrics, I think people would be quite on board with the idea that changing the fabric would change the aerodynamics of the frame. Now, you know, double, triple, you know, 10 times that, and you cover the body with fabrics, then that's going to make a big difference, um, both in terms of how bulky the clothing is, so how much it sticks out, because that'll increase your, your frontal area, but also how well close fitting it is and whether it's it's flappy and um, and and to a when you get really far into it, the exact fabrics that are used at the particular air speeds that you're going to be experiencing. So yeah, getting rid of wrinkles and things like that um, and having clothing that is the right cut for you as well is, is really important um, because if you spend hundreds of pounds on the, the latest and greatest, but it didn't fit you, then you're not gonna get those, those benefits. So how many watts could we expect to save from an AeroFit jersey? If we talk about it in terms of power output savings, um, which is quite a nice way of looking at it if you've got access to a power meter, then um, the savings you'll get in terms of power output will change the faster you go. So you might save five watts or so with an aero jersey if you're swapping from a standard one to a, a, a you know slightly more exciting one. 
Um, and that could be, let's say, five or six watts for that. But then if you tra- at 30 kilometers an hour, but if you travel at 45 kilometers an hour, um, let's say you're going downhill or you're going into a strong headwind, let's say, um, and going at a lower speed, but as we said, the relative airspeed is higher, you could be saving up to 20 watts by having a slightly better jersey. Um, so it's important to bear in mind how the importance of um, you know, these wattage savings gets greater and greater the faster you go, but it's still there at the lower speeds. And so if you're traveling at 30k an hour and you're saving five watts or so, um, over a longer ride, that's that's minutes that you're saving. The, the example that we often use is is as from a, a watts to um, pounds uh, save ratio. You know how much how much money can you um, can you not spend to save as many watts as possible? Um, the uh, your your tires and, and inner tubes are quite a good one, but clothing is is absolutely right up there. Um, so yeah, swapping to a different jersey in terms of an aerodynamic benefit um, will have something very similar to, to going to a slightly deeper set of wheels. Obviously, if you're going from wheels that were heavier and there's a weight saving involved, then that's slightly different. But purely from an aero point of view, um, you, can, you, can, you can roughly equate the two. And are aero socks worth it? Aero socks are a great one. So um, you'll be saving, I mean, it's not a lot, it's not as much as a jersey, but you'll be saving a watt and a half, couple of watts or something um, at 30 kilometers an hour with a set of aero socks. Um, and then, in, you know, we increase the speed up to 45 kilometers an hour, um, so more sort of high racing speed, and that becomes more like five watts. As always, please remember to like and subscribe to the channel if you found this content interesting, and let us know in the comment section below which range best suits your style of riding. We'll see you next time.